Hello everyone, welcome to Bexel Workflows webinar series, Bexel Workflows in synergy with cloud-based solutions. My name is Alexander Ilic, I'm a senior BIM manager at Bexel Consulting and I will try to present you today our latest workflows and our latest uh, cloud-based solutions. So as you know, this webinar series is dedicated to the general integrated BIM workflows but uh, in this time in synergy with the cloud-based solutions as well. Uh, today we are starting the third session in our series that will be dedicated to 4D and 5D construction planning and the synergy of this workflows with cloud-based solutions. Today's session will be focused more on the 5D while the 4D part will be more extensively explained in the next session next week together with the workflow of uh, progress tracking in integrated BIM environment. To give you a brief summary of today's session, in the first part of the session we will focus on the results. So we will first explore the process of exporting 5D in information from the model, uh, exploring the integrated Power BI and Viewer workflows uh, and integrated Power BI and Viewer dashboards and see what are the options, what is the information that we can read, uh, what is the way to modify and customize these templates and these reports. And then in the second part of the session, we will go through uh, detailed steps, how we actually got the results, how we implemented all this integrated uh, 5D workflows to, uh, to integrate all this 5D information into model and then uh, exporting it to cloud-based solutions. Before we start, just brief introduction about our company, mostly for the people that are first time with us today. So Bexel Manager is a software vendor and a construction consulting company with over 17 years in software development experience, 12 years in construction management experience. Uh, our software solutions are present at 65 countries worldwide uh, in more than 5,000 projects of different types. And our software is used to manage more than 250 billion US dollars of project value. We are a multinational member of Building Smart International. We are proud to be finalists for four years in a row. Uh, we also won the Innovation Award in 2020 and we were recognized as leaders in uh, innovation in BIM software solutions in the world. This year we are finalists in the category of technology and implementation and we hope to have uh, good results this year as well. Our user interface is localized in 12 languages so far with Polish and Chinese to be released soon. Um, our clients are big well-known companies around the world and we are proud to say that we gain trust from so many renowned clients. So before we start let's go quickly through the process of uh, uh, acquiring trial licenses in case uh, that you don't have uh, our software license so you have ability to go to our website to go to the trial request and then you have two options you have a standard trial or educational license in case you're a student or professor. Trial license uh, will give you access to 30 days full range of features of Bexel Manager software. Uh, so you just have to request trial and you have just to submit some of the basic information about you, your company, and uh, we just ask you to leave your company or uh, educational institution email and not your personal email. Of course, besides the basic Bexel Manager solution, right now we have a range of cloud-based solutions. Those are in the first place Bexel Viewer and uh, Bexel uh, Portfolio Manager. So also for these two products, you can request a free trial license and the process is uh, pretty similar as with the basic Bexel Manager software. So you just have to give some general information about yourself and submit a request. The same is for the Portfolio Manager. So you just have to go through the process of uh, giving just the, some basic information and you will get 30-day uh, access to full range of features of our softwares. Also, to remind you about the user area, so once you acquire your trial license or commercial license, you're going to get access to 
Excel user area where in the material section you have ability to download for free all of these educational and training materials that are available here so the first group is demo or sample projects where you have different projects or diff of different scale from different uh, authoring tools uh, and so on basic demo sample could be open also from Excel manager directly and our recommendation even though we are showing all of these webinars on the models that are available on Excel user area my recommendation would be that if you're first time exercising our workflows it would be probably better to download basic Revit sample model because it's a small scale model it's it's much easier to handle and to try all of these workflows on this sample project and later when you got experience you can use the large scale projects uh, and those projects that we use in the webinars as well of course in the webinar material materials we have all the materials that are shown in the webinars including some uh, specific uh, demo projects or some specific uh, templates and things that are used that are not part of the basic uh, uh, training program also materials from this webinar will be available uh, in this section as well uh, tutorials and workflows are the series of short uh, videos showing just the basic uh, workflows in Excel manager basic functionalities manuals here we have dedicated documents with step-by-step -step workflow guides for different functionalities of Excel manager so if you go into more detailed training you can consult these uh, interesting documents that are not only including detailed explanation of different steps in Excel manager but also sample projects that are here with all the instructions for every step how to how to actually exercise these workflows in the user interface of Excel manager templates we have all sorts of templates uh, from selection sets cost classification CBS and so on just to clarify that all those templates from the last two updates are also available within Excel manager software in um, knowledge base uh, section of the software also the add-ins oh, we were using a lot of different add-ins in the previous uh, webinars and my colleague also explained the process of installing the add-in it's very simple and it's uh, very straightforward you just have to follow a few lines of instructions and that's it so all those add-ins are also something that we recommend uh, you to use because those are really practical uh, enhancements of the functionalities of the software api scripts as well uh, all the API scripts that are developed are available here and you can download them and use them uh, also we we use them in many of our uh, workflows and we explain how this is used and of course the databases is the material section where you have different cost databases ready for import in Excel manager for different markets so this is the the theme of today's webinar today we're gonna go through the creation of uh, cost classification directly in Excel manager but also you have ability to import it and uh, some of these standardized uh, typical cost classifications for different markets for, from from different uh, uh, parts of the world are available on our website as well for direct import so that will be it about this general information and now we can move to the topic of our today's webinar so as I mentioned in introduction, today's session is envisioned a little bit differently. So at the first part of the session, we will focus on result. We will focus on, on publishing and export of integrated BIM information into cloud-based cloud solution, into collaborative environment. And we will try to exploit the advantages of synergy of integrated BIM model with the collaborative platforms like cloud-based solutions and to show which are all the possible workflows that allow you to present all of this gathered information federated information in the BIM model with other stakeholders again in the second part of uh, the education we will focus more on the workflows that lead to this point of time where you have database to use and to publish to cloud-based solutions so the first step is to open one of our sample projects in this case this is a large scale two tower sample project of course you can 
try and test these workflows as well on the smaller sample projects, which are easier to handle and uh, easier to, to train on when you have less experience. But the first step would be to publish this integrated BIM model, which has integrated cost information to the viewer, since this uh, published model will be the basis for all our further integrations with the BIM data, namely 5D data on today's session. So we're going to just go to publish functionality. This window will open for you to customize your publish. And as you remember, we have option to choose the IFC version. Uh, we have option to choose if we want to export all elements, only selected elements or only visible elements. We're going to choose all elements. We also have ability to customize model division. So we have option not to divide the model at all. That means we have ability to export as one IFC file, which is not recommended, especially for such a large scale project like this one. Then we have ability to divide it by model source, to divide it by model category or by selection sets if we want customized structure of our exported model. So in this case, we're going to choose selection sets and we're going to leave publish selection sets option as well. So if we click publish, is going to ask us which selection sets we want to use as the basis for our model breakdown. We're going to check show selection set option and we're going to be able to inspect all the selection sets that we have in the model. So in this case, we're going to use selection sets work set where we have all model elements grouped into a logical categories of groups of works. And we want our model to be structured in this way because it's going to be much easier for all the users to activate and to load only the part of the model which is relevant for their discipline, which is relevant for their workflows. And they don't have to compromise computing power of their computers for loading complete model every time. So we're going to click OK and publishing process will start. Publishing time, of course, depends on the scale of the model. Publish is now complete and we can go to the link. The link will be also delivered via email where you're going to get direct link to open your model. Once you get the model, you just need to load all the sources. Please know that for the bigger models, you're going to have more requested time for loading. Uh, here we have all the selection sets that we exported and we have a uh, possibility to uh, exercise all these workflows that we explained with the viewer in the first session. But uh, what we're going to focus on today is the Power BI and viewer integration process. And for this, the most essential part is to get the link for this published model and to use it in our integrated dashboards that we're going to export right now. So we're going back to Bexel Manager. And before we publish Power BI dashboards or integrated Bexel Viewer and Power BI dashboards, let's first go through the information that we have in the model. So uh, first of all, as I said, we're starting from the model that has integrated 5D information. So it has complete cost database with all the information regarding cost. Uh, with also the information about resources on these uh, uh, cost items. So we have uh, clear resource definitions. We have also populated prices and all of this will be available for download, uh, of course. Um, and in the second part of this session, we will go through the process how uh, we from the start from the IFC files, federated BIM model, and how we have integrated all of this information. But right now we have this information. We also have some custom breakdown structures that will help us to visualize the data in our dashboard. So for example, here we have color coded model elements by building. Here we have construction sequence. So that means that some buildings that are uh, larger, like this uh, 
building bays in this case are divided into construction phases and to construction zones to be integrated in the 4D in a more optimal way. Uh, we also have everything color coded by the groups of works so we can see that if we call up to the same line we have uh, four main uh, groups of works uh, we also have MEP systems that are color coded in a certain way of course we can isolate these elements to see the color coding by the systems there are some additional CBS custom breakdown structures like for example this one which color codes concrete elements by the amount of reinforcement per cubic meter again interesting for analysis or just simply by uniform assembly code and during the export we can actually customize which of these custom breakdowns should be exported and used in the process of our integrated Power BI report presentation. So after we have 5D information integrated, after we have prepared custom breakdowns, the next step is just to simply go to the manage tab and start publishing process by going to this uh, newly added functionality publish report with Bexel viewer. This time we're gonna export 5D estimation dashboard because that dashboard covers complete cost information on the model. So we're gonna just click and start the publishing process in the first step we have to copy the link that we have just created exporting a model in the previous workflow here we have functionality that allows you to automatically load models in your future dashboards uh, we do not recommend this functionality for model of this scale because it will take a lot of time to automatically load this model into dashboard it is much more optimal that you load it manually or at least to load the parts that are relevant let's say for a certain presentation or for a certain dashboard of course you can load it completely but it is just better to leave the option to to have a possibility to load just the partially model of course in our next update this functionality will be improved a little bit where you're gonna be able to just simply with the drop down menu choose one of the exported links so you will not have to copy and paste the link to this form uh, so let's go to the next level on the next step you have ability to choose one of the cost versions in your model so we can choose both of them or just one of these doesn't matter so it's up to you to decide you have ability to choose which custom breakdowns are going to be exported so let's say let's just get some basic custom breakdowns these three for instance and later we're gonna see how it's gonna look like if we load some additional or if we create some additional custom breakdowns for our for our analysis we're gonna cl just click finish and wait for the power bi document to be exported export is now complete and we can open our power bi dashboard In the Power BI dashboard, we just need to refresh the data. And now we can choose one of our exported cost classifications. The color schemes are also available. So all the three that we have just specified for export. And the last step is just to publish this to the link. So just go to file, publish, and you can publish it online. Now we can open the online link. And the last step is just to embed this report to publish it to a web link. Now we can open the link. Since we have just created our Power BI dashboard link, our Pexel Viewer visual is not active since we haven't logged in into our published model. So we'll have just the first time to go through the login process by simply clicking to the link and go to the login page when you're gonna just log in with your credentials. 
so right now your model is logged in and you can load it but we're not gonna use the viewer this time we're gonna go back to the Power BI dashboard refresh the page and our viewer link is now active and we can proceed to the loading the model so when we load the model we can now choose one of the exported cost versions and we can specify the CBS that is gonna be active according to which our model elements will be color coded on the right side we have ability to quickly filter by the groups of works and to visualize the elements of only specific group of work and we have as well ability to specify any cost item within this group of work or within multiple groups of works as you can see whenever we click on the next cost item not only that the selected model elements are clearly shown in the in the Bexel viewer but also all the charts are updated according to selection so the cost cost of the labor materials equipment all the resources related to a certain elements and all the charts showing to which source those elements belong to and in which uh, group of works and what is the structure of supplement cost and resources within those elements um, another very impro important a feature and I would say even unique feature for Bexel manager is that cost information is integrated to the lowest level to the element level that means that if you select any of the elements of the model you're gonna see exact quantity exact exact price exact resources and all other other parameters for that specific element or groups of elements so let's say if we go and select multiple elements we can see how all the parameters are changing right now what we can also do we can also change the coloring scheme so right now let's see how the model elements are color coded by the groups of works so we can go and select some other group of works let's say domestic water distribution and see the elements that are included in this specific group of elements we can see how the elements of this group of works are distributed across the different sources in the model we can see to which general group of works it belongs and we can see the structure of the resources and supplement costs for these groups of works again we can go and color code them in a different way so we can visualize which in this case cold water system belongs to which part of the building uh, using simple control function we have ability to add additional groups of works to this selection and to see them together and to check all the models and how the costs are distributed across the building we can select elements by the resources as well so here we can visualize all the elements in the model that have plumbers as a labor resource for instance so it gives you a lot of flexibility for visualizing the data in the model uh, we can go and try to select some other groups of works for instance shell and here we can go and try to select all the elements that have concrete pump as a resource specified so here we can see all the concrete elements basically that are executing as executed using concrete pumps for instance uh, we, can, we can combine these filters as well we can deselect the last filter um, and then we have these more detailed filters with which let's say give us uh, possibility to filter to a specific floor so right now we can see all the elements on a certain floor and we can see all the cost items related to that floor and see a uh, complete price and the price of the resources and the quantities of resources for the elements of that specific floor we can even go down to the category or uh, 
family name even so let's say we just want to see all the doors on the 12th floor we can simply isolate it and see it here we want to add railings no problem we want to add slabs stairs we can just simply filter all of these elements and we can easily read all the cost data and quantities and resources for these specific elements with no limitations and again if we go and select any of the elements in the model we can also see exactly to which cost items that element is related what are the resources assigned to that specific element and you can see all different figures that are related to the cost structure of the element and to see uh, exactly in which source it is placed and to which group of work it belongs and this report even though it's a published report could also be customized to a certain extent so let's say for example that you're not satisfied with the table you can even in the published link report customize the columns its width and to you know move it left or right to be more readable to be more practical for you and what you have to present on the project for the values that are important to you and to a certain extent modified to your needs but of course sometimes you need more extensive modifications of the report you want to have some specific reports you want to move out or to add in some additional information you want to change the appearance and things like that this all could be done in the exported reports of Bexel manager using the same model with completely different templates and we're going to demonstrate it now so if we go back to exported power bi report we can see that all the charts and all the tables and every information that is listed here could be changed and could be modified so let's say if you want to modify anything within this table you can remove certain columns you can add new columns from the data source with no limitation so let's say for instance let's make a case that you need to prepare a power bi report to modify it for a project where you don't have resources information so you don't need the information about material cost uh, labor cost or equipment cost uh, you're not gonna have assigned resources for that project let's say so you can just remove all of these uh, you just need to have subcontractor cost and other costs let's say uh, you're gonna just modify the table you can modify it visually as well you can enlarge it uh, of course you can remove these values as well and change it to look the way you want and of course you can remove this chart as well because it's not relevant relevant once you don't have this information and now you can just again publish the new version of this report uh, again repeat the same simple process of publishing the data to the to the online link we're going to publish it in the same way as in the previous case load the model and after the loading is complete we're gonna just go and try some coloring scheme on this newly exported template so right now we have ability to play around in the same way as in the old template we can just see that the data set is now customized according to what we wanted so again we can make a small changes even in the published report with no limitations we can again go and select uh, different groups of work so let's say interior works in this case with more elements included and right now we have very clear presentation about uh, which cost items are linked to which elements in the model where those elements are placed in the grand scheme of things um, we can go and navigate uh, in the same way as in previous one we just does, don't have the certain information that was populated in the old dashboard 
what is planned for the future development of this feature is that uh, we're gonna also have uh, ability not to auto zoom to the model elements as it is automatically done right now so the user will will have control over this process as you can see right, when I click it auto zooms to all the, the elements that are part of that selected group so works and uh, another important feature that that will be in the future part of this uh, uh, integrated dashboards is that user will also have option to completely isolate selected elements so not to have this uh, wireframe um, rendering of the unselected elements but to have uh, complete control over the visual visual effects and as i said this is really really basic customization of the template uh, the possibilities are much bigger you can change everything that you see here and you can reconfigure the dashboards according to the needs of your project or your company with no problem what is also important in this process is of course update it is not enough if you are just once able to export your information and then not having the ability to change it it is very important that you can as the project progresses as you integrate new information as you change and update information according to project life cycle that you can right away update and publish these reports so to demonstrate this we're gonna just uh, go and let's say change few prices just to to compare the differences between two versions of dashboard so let's say let's go and change this uh, reinforcement price for the specific uh, cost item so for instance we can have uh, additional other cost on this cost item that costs let's say five us dollars per unit price so you can imagine that in some realistic use case you're going to probably have a, a lot of updates like this where something is going to be changed in your project uh, let's also add a new custom breakdown let's say that will uh, sort all the elements by uniform but in hierarchy where we're going to group model elements by property uniformat assembly code but instead of just grouping it um, in one level we're going to group it by uh, first part of the code so the first letter in this case uh, then um, uh, let's group it on the next level by the first three letters of the code then on the next level by five letters so if you imagine it's gonna be uh, a a10 let's say then the five letters of the code on the next level and on the last level we're gonna just group it by complete uniform code and we can choose to have color coding on the last level so we'll have very detailed custom breakdown structure in this case and if we show complete hierarchy we can see that we have all four levels of hierarchy included here for our custom breakdown structure uh, right now we're going to just repeat the same process of exporting the 5d estimation dashboard we're gonna use the same published viewer link or again we're gonna skip the auto load models the same as the previous cases we're gonna choose both uh, cost versions and this time we're gonna just select all custom breakdowns including the newly created one and we're just gonna click finish and wait for the publish And after the same publishing process that we have exercised in two previous cases, we are getting the updated uh, Power BI report. And right away we can spot the difference in total cost comparing to the last uh, comparing to the last dashboard that we were using without the resources. And this happened because we actually changed the price 
in one of cost items in the foundation group of works and we can also see the the differences in the cost structure of these groups of works or namely in this specific cost item that we that we have modified by adding the other cost supplement to this specific cost item uh, unit price just to show the changes another change that we have implemented uh, on this model is that we have created additional custom breakdown structure a uniformat hierarchy CBS and if we select some other group of works and color code by uniformat assembly code we're gonna see again different coloring for cost items we can see the facade and all the cost items relating to it uh, isolate the windows to inspect to which groups of uniform at the, uh, cost structure it belongs there's also one interesting example with the reinforcement coloring scheme which gives us an option to visualize concrete elements by the quantity of reinforcement by cubic meter and the structure this parameter is very important for the high-rise buildings and it could be clearly visualized here including the cost information including resources including the structure of these uh, specific group of elements so we can see exactly what is the price of equipment what is the price of material of labor for these selected group of elements we can see the reinforcement uh, per cubic meter and we can see how it decreases with the height of the project which is of course uh, normal um, we can also again see the structure of the cost we can see the structure of the sources and again we can pinpoint certain um, equipment or labor or, or material resources with no problem another interesting uh, coloring scheme that we have exported with this updated link is MEP systems where it can we can easily check the model elements that are related to HVAC systems only and we can clearly see heating and air conditioning lines um, all the equipment uh, and and all the systems that are relevant for this part of the building um, we can also again very clearly visualize the structure of the cost for this group of items we can visualize uh, where the elements are placed in which sources we can also visualize uh, which groups of cost classification those elements are placed in and of course we can go and one by one practically pinpoint groups of works out of this uh, uh, general MEP systems or a specific uh, cost item like this one let's say so again the power of this system is incredible uh, the level of control that you as user have um, is unprecedented and you're practically sure about your models and about your quantities and about your prices uh, precisely to a single model element level so if I just select this piece I'm 100% sure what is the price of this a specific piece of equipment I'm completely aware which labor resources are needed to install it the quantity and the, the price of these resources uh, I see the materials that I have and I can very easily manage complete information on this uh, on this model so uh, we have go in detail through these reports through all of these available dashboards uh, the second part of this session will be the integrated BIM workflow that leads to this specific 
uh, results. So that gives you opportunity to later extract such reports and to, to manage information in this way. So we will start from the basic IFC files all the way to the integrated 5D model, which was used for uh, exporting of the information that we were just presenting in the last half an hour. So this workflow starts, as I said, from federated BIM model that is federated from multiple IFC sources. Uh, and this federated BIM model, it doesn't have any uh, cost information or any reference to the cost information. And from here, we have a few possible choices, a few possible approaches to integrate cost when it comes to Bexel measure. The first one is if we use some sort of standardized cost information or some sort of uh, cost information that exists for our market or for our company. So some custom cost information, but that we have as organized system in the form of, a, a, let's say, Excel spreadsheet. Uh, we have ability to reorganize that, that Excel spreadsheet, to reorganize that cost classification to, uh, to a certain way to be machine readable in, uh, in Bexel Manager. And we have ability to specify so-called element queries and quantity formulas. That means to, to specify for every cost item, uh, to specify the rule, which will then filter the model elements, which will go to each specific cost item and to specify the quantity formula, which will calculate the quantities for that specific cost item to extract the quantities from those specific elements by using certain uh, quantity properties on that, uh, on, on, on that cost item. And then you can just auto assign those elements and you will have your uh, cost information linked to your model elements but in this case your cost information is basically an outside source that is implemented and through the series of defined rules linked to the model elements of course the the resources the cost information all of this could be populated later in, in 5d model or in advanced in the in the imported cost classification um, another workflow which we're gonna exercise today is a smart cost management uh, this approach uh, uses information in the model itself. So it could be some basic BIM information like categories, families, groups of works, or it could be a purposely added uh, or enriched uh, uh, cost codes to a certain model elements, uh, let's say using uh, uh, data enrichment process, which, which was explained in the last uh, session. Uh, where every element in the model has populated in automated way or manual way cost classification code. And based on these codes, we are able in Bexel Manager to uh, generate work breakdown uh, structure uh, using quantity takeoff function. And then using that work breakdown structure as a basis, as a structure for our cost classification, we can uh, start cost wizard and create cost classification out of this the WBS structure. Uh, we can use uh, additional knowledge base templates for naming, for quantity formulas, for rules of measurement for these cost classifications. And then when we complete the process, we will get complete cost classification, which has the link to all the model elements and we just have to populate resources and prices and we will have complete cost information without a need to specify uh, so-called quantity formulas and element queries. So this is the faster way, uh, uh, but it requires a certain preparation when it comes to templates if you're not using some of the standardized templates that are available in knowledge base right away. After that process is complete, of course, we have a fully completed 5D uh, be model with integrated cost data and from then on we can proceed with what, what we have done just uh, uh, at the beginning of today's sessions at the first part of this session and that is to export this data and to share this data with, with other stakeholders uh, to export it to Power BI, to Power BI and viewer dashboards, uh, to compare different cost versions and even using the API to export to some specific uh, uh, cost classification formats like BC3 or GAIB format 
uh, let's say just to name some of these. So let's start with the workflow. So first thing we're gonna do today before starting our integrated BIM workflow is to create a new project. Uh, for this workflow, we're going to use one of the available projects from our user area. It is named Two Towers. So we're going to give the name to the project. We're going to define the name of the version, version 01. And we're going to choose source IFC files to federate our BIM model. We're going to select all sources, click open and create the project. Now we can see how multiple sources from multiple different authoring tools are parsed and federated into one single model and we can use it for all the following BIM integrated workflows from now. So the first challenge that we faced is when we're talking about 4D and 5D workflows that our model elements does not have proper coding system and proper information that will allow us to integrate first 5D and then 4D information. So the first step is to repeat what was uh, explained in the last session uh, so the data enrichment process, which will give us opportunity to, to get a strong data layer that will allow us to integrate cost and schedule information into the model. Before we proceed to this process, I will just quickly walk you through the manage templates option because today we're going to use a lot of these predefined standardized templates that are available in every Bexel Manager. Some of these have been seen in the last two sessions as well. But today we're going to use quantity takeoff predefined templates. Uh, we're going to use data enrichment templates as well that were used in the last session as well. Uh, we're going to also use uh, rules of measurement for creating a cost classification and we're going to use name cost classification templates as well. We will go in detail and uh, check these templates on every of the following steps. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to add in and we're going to use import properties from Excel add in. This add in is available in Bexel user area. It is accompanied with a very detailed document for the installation. So it is very simple to install. And the last education, my colleague just uh, uh, showed a, a, a few steps that are needed for uh, installing the add-ins in Bexel Manager. So it's very simple to install and very simple to use. So we're going to just go to import properties from Excel. So we're going to just start the add-in, go to location in the knowledge base where we have predefined standardized templates. And here you can see that we can enrich model elements with uh, a few different cost classification systems. We have uniform and basic, uniform and detailed, uniclass, and in 276. So let's just inspect uh, the first of these and to see how it works. So it is very simple uh, template that just uh, specifies, in this case, category, system group name, uh, structural element type, and adds the DIN276 code and DIN276 description to the model elements. Template that we're going to use today is a uniformat detailed template. And this template has a little bit more parameters to, uh, to combine for the, um, for the coding workflow because it is a detailed template. So it, uh, it sorts elements to a uh, more detailed groups of works according to uniform and standard. So here we can see uh, system group name, uh, structural uh, usage, uh, story elevation, work set name, as well as function, and even mark in some specific cases. And again, we are adding a uh, new text type format, uh, new text type property which is named Uniformat Assembly Code and Uniformat Assembly Description. And these two properties will be placed in Bexel Edit, newly formed Bexel Edit uh, property set. So we're going to just select T276 
desired template and click open. After a short loading process, we will get fully enriched BIM model. Enrichment process is completed. The add-in has automatically created selection sets that could serve as the check, a sort of a check process where you can check if all the elements got the, the proper code and uh, if you have certain codes that doesn't have corresponding elements in this model so all of these templates could be uh, completely customizable so you can prepare any cost classification in the world it could be cost classification that is uh, specific for certain market or certain company and just in case we're going to check on few elements if we have newly added properties so we can see different uniform assembly code for different types of elements in the model once we have model with the classification code integrated so with using a simple add-in we have enriched our model we made it suitable for the 4d and 5d integration the next step is to create work breakdown structure based on the populated properties in the model in the previous educations we did this by simply creating a quantity takeoffs that were using this code systems for the vbs hierarchy so what we were doing we were just sorting all the elements by the populated uniform code on the first level second level third and fourth level this time we have ability to do this uh, more quickly by simply uh, using templates so we're going to create new blank quantity takeoff we can name it uniform wbs we can use all the elements in the model with no exception use selection and now instead of going and manually creating QTO which will uh, use the property uniform at assembly code we can rely upon our knowledge base and we can load the template from our knowledge base so here in the knowledge base we have a few templates for the quantity takeoff function so we have template that breaks down uh, rooms in the model or spaces by area and by room name and uh, room type uh, we have uh, one by the uniform assembly code uniform property and category so those are the basics of course any template that you prepare any quantity takeoff template could be saved to your own personalized knowledge base and reused in the future so in this case we're going to reuse uniform assembly code property template we're going to click open and here it is what this template is doing it's it's doing what we actually were uh, creating before manually so it is using property uniform at assembly code that was added using uh, data enrichment add-in and on the first level it just extracts the first letter of the code so a b c d on the second level it extracts the first three letters of the code so it's a10 a20 and so on and on the third level first five letters so a10 10, 10 let's say for example and on the last level it uses the complete uniform but assembly code on the low on the last level so uh, uh, below the uniform code it uses a uh, family and why is this the case well you could have cost classification some standardized cost classification to a certain level of organization but uh, in many cases let's say and uh, if if you classify uh, windows let's say in one project you would probably have different types of windows with different cost information on this this project and probably that last level of cost classification will be project specific or at least company specific so in this case we're using family as as something that is project specific for the last level of the of this uh, work breakdown structure or or our or for our cost classification of course the the quantities are basic uh, default quantities like count area length and volume 
so we're gonna click OK and here we have quantity takeoff we can of course color code elements based on this newly created quantity takeoff and we can see that it is color coded on the on the last level of uniformat uh, assembly code of course since we used all the elements on the in the project we certainly have some elements that should not be part of our cost classification so those are the the undefined elements and we can simply remove these elements from takeoff and now we have exactly what we needed we have a complete work breakdown for our cost classification organized by the uniformat code with the uh, family name on the last level of our cost classification so right now we have prepared the template for data enrichment uh, and that property is named uniformat assembly code uh, we have created work breakdown structure using only this code and family name and now we want to use it as the basis for our cost classification so how we're going to do this we're going to go to the cost editor and we're going to create new empty cost classification and name it uniform cost click ok and then we're going to select the parent folder which is now completely empty and start a creation wizard for creating a cost classification of course there are two workflows as we mentioned before there is a, a, a possible workflow where you have your cost classification uh, your standardized cost classification in the form of Excel spreadsheet which you just uh, reformat and change shape in the in the proper way to be a uh, machine readable for the Bexel manager and then define in Excel uh, element queries and quantity formulas and just import it to Bexel manager or with this approach with the intelligent cost management where you have ability to create your cost classification using predefined templates and using information that we have populated through through and data enrichment add-in so we're gonna start creation wizard function and choose from quantity takeoff since we use quantity takeoff as the basis for our work breakdown structure it could be also created from cbs and the process of automated creation of cost classification looks like this so first you have to choose the quantity takeoff or CBS uh, that was prepared for your work breakdown structure in our case it's uniformat WBS the only one that we have just prepared uh, then we have to choose the codification for our classic classification item that means for folders for the higher levels for hierarchy of organization of uh, uh, cost classification in this case we're going to use of course uh, quantity takeoff since as you remember we have extracted the parts of uniformat code to form our hierarchy in the model so we're going to stick to to that uh, same code from quantity takeoff for the name on the other hand we're gonna use knowledge base so how this works uh, as you remember in quantity takeoff we have codes so we have a a10 a1010 a1010 200 let's say so we have codes for every level of our hierarchy of uh, cost classification but if we use the names from QTO it's gonna be just repeated code and that's not something that we want so here we're gonna choose knowledge base and we're going to browse for the proper naming uh, template so as you can see there are few standardized naming templates in our case since we were using uniformat cost classification we're going to use this template that is dedicated to uniformat so as you can see on the first level of our work breakdown structure we have just the first letter of our uniformat assembly code so whenever is the first letter a we're gonna have substructure name and description for that classification item on the next level a10 is gonna attach foundations and so on so as you can see it's a simple excel spreadsheet you can very simply modify this existing spreadsheet or create a new ones 
that are exactly suited to your specific, let's say, company specific or market specific cost classifications, and you can use it in the future for your uh, automated cost classification creation. So we're gonna just pick this Uniforma 2 name cost classification template and open it. The next uh, group of properties that we have to define is the coding system for the cost item. So if you remember, we have levels of cost classification, the parent levels of cost classification that are based on our uniformat assembly code. But on the last level of cost classification to the level of cost item, we were using family name. And family name is not a standardized uh, property. It is a more or less project specific or at least company specific. And here we need to define how uh, we're gonna code this part of our cost classification. Uh, here we have option to use schema and schema is a way to define how your coding system will add suffix to your already standardized uniform cost classifications in this case. So let's say that we have uh, some foundation uh, family for the A1010200 let's say group of works. So the first family will be A1010200.001 let's say if we define this uh, this uh, coding system. The default coding system is a uh, three digits and point as a separator so we're gonna stick to this system and of course this coding system and this coding schema could be customized later as well. Of course, for the name, we're gonna again use quantity takeoff. So we're gonna use family name since we don't have predefined template system for naming this, uh, these families. Of course, in case that you have it, you can also use it on this level. So there is no any limitation in this regard. The next group of properties that we have to define is the rules of measurement part. So here we can use one of three options. We can use rules of measurements from quantity takeoff. In this case, our rule of measurement should be one of the quantity properties in QTO. So in this case, area, length, volume, or count. The problem with this approach is that if you use any of these, you're gonna probably have mixed option. You're gonna have cost items that are calculated in area, other cost items that are calculated in pieces uh, and third one which is in, in volume. So in this case you will have a lot of work, a lot of rework later in your cost classification to go to every specific cost item and to specify uh, to change this default uh, quantity uh, rules of measurement or quantity setup. So instead of using this we have also option here to use knowledge base template and we can browse and check the template. So here we have three basic templates. We have uh, advanced, basic IFC and basic uh, uh, Bexel matter template. Today we're going to use uh, advanced and we're going to inspect it. So again, the logic is pretty similar to what we already have in the previous uh, uses of template in today's workflow for the specific category in this case, but this is not something that is hard coded. So this could be a completely different property if you need it in your project as well. But in this case, with the combination of category, structural usage, we were able to specify uh, which group of elements should have which quantity formula and which quantity unit. So for instance, if we have a cable trace, it's gonna be always calculated as a length, the quantity formula will be length and the unit will be meters. What is also specific with this advanced uh, Bexel Manager workflow, let's say if the slab is structural slab, then we can predefine in template that not only that this slab should be calculated in certain way, we can predefine that our algorithm should create four additional sub items for this cost items that define reinforcement, formworks, concrete pouring and concrete finishing. So we're going to automatically create four additional uh, uh, cost items with its specific quantity or rules of measurement defined and specific uh, uh, unit measures for every one of these. So and we can do this in all the levels of cost classification where we need it. 
and we can specify even very complex quantity formulas like in this case in this way of course again everything is completely customizable and all of this could be used as the basis for your own customized templates as well we're going to close this excel and choose this template click open and now we have completed the setup of our cost classification creation wizard and we're going to just click ok and what we got is a cost classification that is completely reflecting our work breakdown structure as defined in quantity takeoff and it uses the uniformat assembly code that we have populated using an add-in and we also have specified rules of measurement quantity units quantity type and quantity formula from previously defined templates we can expand to a certain level and explore the structure of our newly created cost classification and as you remember on a fifth level of classification for certain uh, types of elements we have specified that we want to create separate cost items and groups of cost items for in this case reinforcement formworks concrete pouring concrete finishing that means that these four groups of cost items will be assigned to the same elements so you don't have to uh, model reinforcement or formworks you're going to just rely on the existing concrete elements in this case and assign four different cost items to these uh, cost elements and if you remember on the last level we have family name as the name of our cost items and for the coding system we were using the previously loaded uh, uniformat codes and just added 0 0.001 0 0.002 to the to the last level of cost classification and this is defined in the define code option so in this case since we just used default defined uh, code schema uh, it was using default uh, three numbers and and uh, point as a separator of course you have ability to change this into uppercase lowercase letters to change number of symbols and to change separator symbol as well so now we have cost classification with clearly defined cost item code we defined hierarchy we defined naming we defined quantity formula L element query and we did all of this based on the templates but what we miss is the information about cost and information about resources and there are two possible workflows to include this information in your 4d5d model the first one is to just go into every cost item and define uh, unit price so you can define it using supplements that means that you don't know actually which resources should be part of this specific cost item but you know which percentage of your price is dedicated to which of these five categories uh, another possibility is just to assign resources to assign resources from resource pool so you can define resources in the resource pool you can define the type of resource uh, the quantity type quantity unit define the cost and then you have ability to just uh, pick certain resource to define the quantity of that resource that is required for that uh, cost item to define waste factor and to fine-tune your uh, cost classification in this way another possibility that we're going to exercise today is to export this uh, cost classification to excel so you can just export it into excel spreadsheet and now you have the same cost classification with the same information as in Bexel manager but in the form of excel spreadsheet so in case that i don't know you have different subcontract different subcontractors offering you different sets of prices you can just get the the quotes from from them and just match it match the the prices by code and here you again have ability to populate the prices by the materials labor equipment supplement or you can just populate resources in the resource tab and just assign resources to a specific cost item now we're going to see how the fully loaded cost classification with all the resources and costs looks like 
So this is how our cost classification looks like after all the information regarding uh, prices and resources are integrated into cost classification. So uh, this, the process is pretty simple. In a resource sheet, you have ability to define specific resources in the same way as in Bexel Manager. And then you're just adding the new rows uh, under every uh, cost item where you want to assign certain resource. You just define a resource name and resource quantity and uh, all those resources will be assigned uh, to cost items in Bexel Manager as well. If we go back to the model, we can then simply import this cost classification from Excel. So we're going to just import the same cost classification that we have exported with integrated information about cost and resources. So it is done very simply. We're going to just select the cost classification and click open. And you can now see right away that we have all the prices defined for all cost items. And if we go to some of the, to some specific cost items, we're going to see that we also have resources defined. So we have defined resources, quantities, resources, prices, and unit prices, including supplements for certain parts of our cost classification, just using Excel. After we have created our cost classification and after we have populated detailed information about cost and resources in this case, even though you can only populate the cost information without resources, if you don't have that information or if your role on the project is, uh, is such that it doesn't require you to, to populate the uh, resources information. Uh, after that, the next important step is auto assign process. Auto assign process is the process in which we're going to assign model elements to the, to the created cost classification. That means that the computer algorithm will go through the model elements and find all the elements that are corresponding to a certain element query defined in the cost classification. It will calculate quantity formula uh, or, or the quantities of the project based on the quantity formula that we have defined and of course multiply it with the unit prices. Uh, and create uh, what would be uh, defined as a project budget, let's say. But before this process starts, uh, we first have to exercise one more validation process that will go through our complete cost classification and check if there are cost items that doesn't have applicable elements or if there are cost items that are failing to assign to for a certain reason. Uh, this process is very simple. It is just done by, by clicking on the folder in cost classification for the part of cost classification that you want to check. In this case, we want to check it for the complete cost classification. Right click and then we say check applicable elements. Here you have ability to check only selected elements or all elements in the project. The whole process takes just a 10 to 15 seconds in, in most cases. Validation process is complete. And the results are delivered in the form of series of selection sets. So we have the, the run and the date of the run. And this series of selection sets there, they have uh, two uh, folders. One is info folder, which actually just recreates the hierarchy of the of your cost classification. So it gives you a folder structure and selection sets for every uh, cost item uh, in the project. So you can easily navigate and isolate uh, elements by a hierarchy of uh, cost classification. Like in this case, let's say, we can find the uh, elements for A10, 10, 100, 0 .001, 0 .001. We can also turn on some other elements as well. So it's very easy for navigation and it's uh, automatically created. And uh, another part of this validation process is the warning uh, folder, which actually defines uh, or actually identifies all the cost items where there was no, let's say, query defined, or in some cases, if there is uh, some of the required property for quantity formula, let's say missing. So it will give you right away warning which cost items 
uh, have problem or which group of elements lack certain property that is necessary for a proper assignment process. So here we see that our cost classification is more or less without any specific uh, problems regarding the assignment process. And then we're going to just simply select parent folder and just auto assign cost items to the new cost version. Of course, if you want to update that cost version later, you can assign due, due to some changes, customizations of uh, cost classification, some items and so on. You can always assign it to active cost version and, uh, and update basically your project budget with a few clicks. So we're going to use to a new cost version. Again, the process is more or less completed in, in 10 to 15 seconds for a model of this size. So the assignment process is complete. We can go to assigned items. And here we're able to see our project budget with the specified uh, price for every cost item. And the price is also broken down by the material costs, labor cost, equipment cost, uh, other costs in some cases for some additional costs that could not be marked as uh, labor material or equipment and even subcontractor cost for certain groups of cost items where we had uh, the additional cost for the subcontracting, like in this case for landscape, let's say. And of course, we can see base construction cost on the right side of this, um, of this list. Of course, item could be selected directly from, from the list. So you can select elements, you can isolate selected elements and zoom to it. Of course, uh, you can do it also vice versa. So you're able to select certain element and then filter the complete uh, budget by the element selection. So you can see exactly cost items that are related to that specific element and you can see quantity and price of only that specific element. So it works in both directions. What is also important is that uh, you as a user have ability also to incorporate non-BIM cost items. So the items that doesn't have any model elements specified in the model. And this is done simply by clicking a new cost assignment. And then you can find the non-BIM cost items that are in this case specified in the Z group of works, which are the works that are non-BIM works. Of course, you have ability to add any of these and to specify the quantity. So let's say if it's a field supervision, if it's a, let's say a monthly payment, then you can say, okay, it's, it's a 15 months, let's say for the field supervision. So you manually specify quantity of this cost item since those are non-BIM cost items that are, that doesn't have any reference in the model. And of course, all of these prices are included in the final budget figure as well. Aside from resources and uh, supplement costs and uh, non-BIM costs, user also have ability to specify variable costs. So user has ability to define markup costs for complete project or for some part of the, of the project price. It has option to include overhead costs as a percentage of total cost, uh, the taxes. So let's say, for example, uh, we're going to define that the overhead costs are 5% of the uh, contract value, let's say, and we have defined it for the complete cost classification. Of course, you can do this for every cost item separately in case that you have different values, let's say for the markup or some specific costs that are related only for a certain group of works or for a certain specific cost line item. So if we just click OK, we're going to have this additional costs and we can also add this new column using column chooser. So we're going to say overhead cost and we're going to just put it wherever is convenient for us in this case. And we're going to have overhead costs as well. Uh, we can also add base total cost, including overhead. And we're going to see that the values are different. So this could be completely customized. 
any additional column that you add you can actually add or remove from the from the budget list and in this way you can have the option to to precisely track the costs on your project another interesting and important feature in the assigned items or project budget uh, functionality is the ability for you to have first of all to alter the hierarchy the structure of your cost budget and also possibility to have multiple versions of the cost classification so you can simply duplicate it in the format cost spatial structure and how this works so let's say this budget hierarchy is logical if you are dealing with the tenderings if you're dealing with the 5d if you're dealing with the project budget but let's say on the construction site if you are let's say contractor it would be probably more convenient for you to have all of these quantities and all of these prices broken down let's say by spatial structure of the project so that you can uh, predict which quantities of the necessary materials of the necessary resources should be prepared for certain spatial unit of the project so how you can do this you can just uh, right click on the cost classification and ungroup assignments that means that you're going to just be left with the cost items with the line items so the last level of cost classification and the upper levels of hierarchy upper levels of cost classification could be altered and it, this uh, could be done by simply using creation wizard and he, here you have ability to, to load templates from the creation templates from the uh, scheduling process that we will explain in detail later or you have ability to use uh, some of the possible properties of selection sets uh, zone items zone levels uh, buildings uh, building stories and so on so anything that is available in the model classification levels or to combine many of these uh, different ways of uh, breaking down so let's say we're gonna just do one simple example with the buildings where we're gonna just group complete cost information by a building floor in this case so we're gonna just click ok so right now we got our budget grouped by the floors in this project of course we have undistributed elements those are the non-beam elements that cannot be distributed on the spatial uh, uh, structure of the project because there is no specified element which is considered as, as, as a spatial element that represents this cost item so this is in the group undistributed and the rest of the cost items are clearly sorted according to the to the floor according to the elevation on the project and we can just simply select all the elements from certain floor and we can see and isolate these elements in the model and see the overall price for this specific floor for all the works or just to specify uh, certain groups of works on this specific uh, spatial zone and we can just isolate it and see it and of course vice versa we can do it uh, also from the model back to the back to the budget as well of course this is very simple example uh, you can combine multiple levels of organization so we can uh, combine it by building by building floor then we can use certain uh, levels of cost classification because it would be probably useful to have also the groups of these works uh, under every floor but it is completely customizable and the user could just utilize it in the way it is most practical for for him and his role on the on the project and with this our 5d beam integrated workflow is complete as you have seen we have started from ifc sources we have enriched these sources with the classification codes we were using knowledge based templates to create cost classification directly in beam model relying upon data layer of our model that was enriched using data enrichment add-in and with this workflow we have achieved to have reliable cost database upon which we can now exercise dashboards published workflows that we have shown in the first part of this 
session and with this we are uh, completing day three of our education series uh, stay with us on the next session which is the last in this series of sessions where we're gonna go in detail through the 4d workflow and progress tracking workflow using Bexel Manager integrated BIM platform in synergy with Bexel cloud-based solution. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day.